ready. Call to order the Ironton City Council meeting of July 14th, 2022. Uh, with us tonight for invocation, we have Reverend Margaret Tyson with Quinn Chapel AME Church. Uh, if you would stand for our invocation and remain standing for the pledge immediately following. Please bow our heads. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we come before you this evening in all humility, asking that you would bless all the work that is done in this council. We pray that you would bless the council members, bless the mayor and the staff, and everyone who has anything to do with making this city the most positive city we can be. We ask you, Lord, that you will reach out your hands of love and protection and wrap us all up in that so that we will know that we belong to you. Keep us, bless us, guide us, lead us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Tyson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Marta. Here. Here. Fanny. Here. Harvey. Here. Hawk. Here. Klein. Here. Harry. Here. Pierce. Here. Next on the agenda, we have the approval of minutes uh, from the regular council meeting of June 23rd, 2022, finance committee meeting of June 23rd, 2022, and the special meeting of June 27th, 2022. Do we have any edits, additions, omissions to those minutes? I'm hearing none. Those minutes will stand as approved. Um, next, we have, for our first part of our audience participation, we have an invited guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Mike Pemberton from our flood uh, department and Mr. Charlie McKenzie from Service Pump and Supply in Huntington, West Virginia. If you guys would please. You guys ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I guess start off with uh, we're going to uh, give you some options on our pump station, our big pump station that uh, has four of the biggest pumps. Uh, and, uh, and we start. We, we service pump and supply has pulled one out, and they built it apart. And uh, Charlie's going to give us some options on versus continue with uh, rebuilding this pump or trying to buy possibly a new one. So, here's Charlie to maybe explain that a little bit. Okay. Uh, like you said, we pulled the pump. We took it in our shop and assembled it and we found a few issues with it the suction bowl which is the bottom of the pump that holds the bearing holds everything true had a, a big crack in it uh, probably just from fatigue from age and all that um, so what we did was we went ahead and tried to weld it up uh, and it worked we cleaned it up welded up it looks really good uh, i think we can use it i can't guarantee nothing on, on that part of it um, and we'll put a new shaft in it and new bearings in it and it'll be should pump like it like it should uh, that's one option to, to, on a repair uh, a lot of times we like to re-bowl it uh, if it's got you know, a lot of wear and stuff on it which means we'll use the head over because everything's got to match on your pipe and your center lines and all that so you put a brand new pump in on it but this one here is a little bit unique it's really short uh, so we don't have a much room to work with and I'm trying to find something that may fit in there and I'm not having a lot of luck right now so uh, that is an option that we might be able to keep pursuing uh, the third option uh, would be to replace the pump uh, I've got some uh, preliminary numbers for you uh, there's a lot more information I'm gonna have to gather up if you want to go this route and it's gonna be very time-consuming but I don't care to do it if you think that's the route you want to go but just a budget number, you're looking at about $135,000 for the pump. And that doesn't uh, include the installation and what we've done so far. Um, if you want to go ahead with the repair, uh, like we talked about, you know, we welded up, it looks pretty good. Uh, new bearings, new shaft and stuff in there, you're looking at about $42,494. And I can leave you guys copies of this if you want. I've got a few pictures in here that I brought. If you guys want to look at it, you can see what, what kind of shape it's in. Um, it's, it's usable. Um, the 
you know, eventually it is going to have to be replaced. It's already been welded on uh, prior to us getting it uh, a different place. It still looks really good. Uh, I like it. You know, I don't think it'll it'll break anymore or whatever. Uh, but that's that's where we are with it. Craig? Charlie? Yes. Um, if, we put, if we put a new pump in there, is that the suction bowl? Or is that everything? If you put a new pump, it'll be everything but the motor. Okay. Use your existing motor and put it on air. If you want to replace it, I can get your price on it. But uh, it's, it was running. Everything's good on it right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Think about it. we, we got to think about it. This is just one. We have in this same pump station. We got three more that we're going to we're going to pull and uh, rebuild and do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing to the next one. And as you all remember, we we're doing it as criteria, which is the demand. And that pump station is calls for the most demand. You're talking about station one, right? Say so it's five. Station five. Station five. That Vesuvius. That's our that's our first one. But yeah, the, the, it we got to keep that one. We got to keep that one going. Like I said, that's the first one that goes in operation, and it's the last one that comes out. Charlie, one more question. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, for the fix, what's the expect? What's the life expectancy for that? I would I would say because I mean it doesn't get around a lot, correct, Mike? No. Yeah. Uh, I mean you might you might be able to uh, put this out for another 10 years for you got to replace it but you know it's got the crack we dealt with there's some fins that's broke they probably won't pose any extra problems the metal's getting uh, starting to get a little bit thin uh, but it sooner or later it's going to have to be replaced so we've got 80 years out of the new, out of the new but we can fix it for 10 more years mm -hmm. yeah potentially replace it and get another 80 years out of it possibly yeah okay. chris Charlie, yes. Uh, so, so 135,000 uh, parts, parts only. No, the, no, the, the 135,000 is, is the budget number because I still got to get more information, but that is the whole complete pump. Got it. The head, the bowls, impellers, everything, you, you're brand new. Can you give me an idea of what um, labor would be on that? You said it did not include labor. We, we've already priced that, I can't remember what it was. I've already got a purchase order to put it back in, so that's covered whichever way you go. If you want to go with the new or repair, I can't remember what it is on top of 39,000. Yeah, 39. Pull it and to reinstall it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are all of the, are all of the, uh, the pumps the same throughout the city? They're, they're probably not all the same. This station, you've got one other station that's the same? Uh, two. We've got two stations. It's the same pump design as, as this one. I guess what I'm asking. So okay. there's, there's 12 total of this type of pump, 12 of them. So I'm just wondering, I, mean, I think I see where Craig's going with this question. I think so. Yeah, yeah. For an example, if the if the bowl was cracked on there beyond, uh, and uh, uh, we save these these pumps that we take out of here yep. for the other six big ones, uh, yeah, that's that's feasible to do. Okay, thank you. It's similar, similar to what we've done to the switch gear. We saved the old switch gears out of to in, in case we would need them. And we got parts for station three. And I guess my, my thought, if yeah. that wasn't if that wasn't something that was on the horizon, <clears throat> would it be worth us uh, warehousing these things as we discussed right. the last meeting? You know, the manufacturer's gone, but there's got to be other places in the country that need it. So okay, thank you. Mike. Um, Mike, in that pump station there's four pumps, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Do you have the ability I think this was probably pump number one. Correct. And so it would pick on the earliest and the most. So do you have the ability to make it pump number four? With, with the new switch gear that we got, we can call that pump any any number 
one to four. Okay. So by it being, if, if we choose to go the repair route, we can take a little pressure off of it so it wouldn't kick on necessarily sure. every time, but and it might buy us some time that way. Yeah. Okay. Craig? I just got one more brief question. So I mentioned the last time that you weren't here, there's a short window that we have to fix those things, right? It's like all this yeah. in September and that's it? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we still got a little bit of time for this one. Well, not real. I mean, we're in July. <laughs> Yeah. For us, for us to get everything lined up, we're running up against it. So I just oh, want to no. make sure that I was correct in saying that you have a short window in August we to do. work on those yeah. other conversations. So. Yeah. Bob? <clears throat> when you look at both of these, the, uh, the one to repair, it's like 80 years old or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to replace it is one that you would replace it with. The the pump that I found so far uh, is the it's a dimming pump and they've been out for a long time. I could find out what the actual length of time they've made this exact pump for. Yeah. I don't I don't know it off the top of my head. Dimming well, dimming is only because of the fact that all the years that I've been here, mm -hmm. every time Mike needs to get to some kind of part for the pump stations, they're almost they're obsolete. There's no replacement stuff for nothing. So if we buy a new one, would we be fairly confident that in 10 years there'll be part for it or 15 years or whatever? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, I can go back to the manufacturer and I don't care at all to do the research and find out how long it's been available. And I doubt they have any plans to cancel it. The Deming's been around for a long time. They're in a lot of water plants and stuff on a much smaller scale pump, but they're out there. There's a lot of them out there. Chris, one more small question. So if we decide to go forward with this replacing, um, is there a, an inventory of parts or pieces that are under stress more than any other? So it might be a good idea for us to purchase an extra X, Y, or Z kind of thing so we've got it on hand. Uh, the, the bearings in the shaft are wear tear items. Uh, the, this one looked pretty good. Uh, the problem we had with uh, with the shaft, we ended up having to cut it to get it apart because we couldn't get it done thread because uh, it's just been in for so long. Uh, but typically, that all comes out. And if it wasn't for that, I could have used the probably the tube over and, and possibly the shaft because it, it, it really didn't have a whole bunch of wear on it. But if you want spare bearings and a shaft, I can you know, we can supply that too. I've got one last thing. Um, if, if we do go with a, a new pump, is there any type of warranty or guarantee on? It'll it'll come with the manufacturer's warranty. I can get that for you. Okay. It's I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's probably 12 months parts defects and workmanship. Uh, they don't uh, cover pulling it and putting it back in. Just just whatever parts go bad. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and get that and send it to Mike and or John or whoever. That way you guys will have that too. Yeah, if you can get us just whatever information you can get to us and send it to Mike or, or John or both of them, and then we'll get it. Okay. So, yeah. Everybody good? Nate? Mike, what's your what's your recommendation from all the years? On mine? Yeah. I, I like the, the Pomona pump. Uh, uh, if we can rebuild this thing and it's, I, I'd rather go with it. You'd rather go with but, the but, rather go And with the reason region. why is, is Charlie's going to have to, if he d does find a new pump, he's going to have to retrofit it to our application through the floor, out the floor, then through the wall, and up over top the levee. It'll, it'll have to, the new one will have to be retrofitted to that. But that's just my opinion. You've been doing it long enough, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they've done a good job, you know, the Pomona pump was made in, out in Pomona, California, and they, that company lasted a long time. They're, they're obsolete now, I think it is. Yes, I tried to find uh, parts for another customer and could not find them on the internet. And I even called uh, City Hall and got the business department to see if they had a business license for Pomona. And they didn't have any records the past five years, but in the last five years, they didn't have anything for them. And I had another manufacturer told me that they were out of business a long time ago. So what, whatever 
these pumps here need, you're just about to go have to make it. Manufacture them yourself or something? Yeah. Yeah. And Huntington, Huntington has the same pumps. Huntington, uh, city of Huntington has the same pump that we got, and some of their pump stations. Yeah. Sounds like a good place for an old uh, pump park factory <laughs> around here. Yeah. We've got land for it. <laughs> but that you know that that's my opinion that I like the Pomona pump. If we can fix this one, I, I would, I'd say go for it. I'm going to go with Mike's recommendation. Everybody good? Yeah. Thank you guys for, for Thank you. the information. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to audience participation. If anybody has anything, uh, questions, comments, concerns for council, please step to the podium, state your name and address, and you will have five minutes. State your comments. Uh, Thomas Schwab, uh, 2701 South 6th Street, Ironton, Ohio. Uh, you know, when I was in here in February, we were addressing the rehab houses. Nate, you came up with the ordinance, and, and I just wondered if you have all came up with any. It's been a year, and there's a moratorium on them for a year. <coughs> have you all came up with any zoning on that yet? Nate? Uh, we have been doing research as far as what other communities are doing. Uh, we've talked to different zoning consultants. Uh, so we're, now we're working on uh, putting together a workshop to discuss three different options for a combination of those things. Um, one of them would be a limit to those based on population. One would be a, a distance from each other. And the third was... There's three, there's, three, there's three different options as far as we're looking at addressing that by um, ordinance moving forward. So, okay, yeah. so the, this, this uh, moratorium's until December, That's I correct. understand. Yes. And uh, so nothing's been sent to the zoning commi uh, committee on that. I mean, we have a zoning committee in Ironton, I understand. Now, nothing's been sent to them on that yet? No. We've got, you all haven't came up with any ideas or anything I, that you can send yes. to them and say, this is what we, we would like to have done. Well, like I just said, Tom, we have been doing research and we've contacted different zoning consultants to come up with different ideas. We have three different ideas that we're going to discuss in the zoning workshop. And once we get, come up with that, then we'll move that forward to the zoning. Okay. Uh, now, am I under the understanding that the Art and Tribune, the old Art and Tribune building is going to be another rehab center? Have you heard anything on that, uh, I have Nate? Not. No, that's I what I understand. I, I mean, not. they're up there working on it now, and it was bought by somebody that ran one. And uh, I, I, I have not, I have not heard. Um, so that's going to that's mayor called in on this. I don't, I don't know. Mayor, mayor, can you hear? I can hear. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if you could uh, I'll help answer Mr. Schwab's question. I don't know if there's been any, anything. It looks like they're moving forward up there with anything? that. And I know there's a moratorium on it for a year, but uh, if they move that up there, then that whole neighborhood is going to be full of nothing but rehab houses. Mayor, Mayor can you help answer Mr. Schwab? Sorry. What's he in these? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we can hear you. Um, I mean, if we'll check it out, um, as long as the moratorium's in place, they can't open. Right, I understand that, but this this is July already, and the moratorium runs out in December, and you know, there's a, several houses being bought up. I mean, they're they're they understand that now, but there's going to be a lot. Uh, if they open that up there, there's going to be a lot a lot of more an influx of a lot more people in Ironton and Lawrence County for this. And that was the problem before. That's why you all came up with the ordinance because the homeless population, the overdoses and everything have increased. And uh, so, you know, this, this apparently has to be addressed by December. 
That's correct. That is that is our plan. Okay. We've actually, I would like to give you some good news. Is our uh, enforcement officer has done a fantastic job. I think everybody up here no. agrees. Uh, Chris, who is that now? Joe Ross. Okay. And he's actually, I know of two for sure that he has stopped from, you know, setting up shop, if you want to call it that. Okay, but, uh, yeah. He's, he's done a really good job. So I, I have the utmost confidence that he will, if that's what, you know, if it, Falls yeah. within the moratorium. I just, you know, I just I wanted to take you care all. Of that. I mean, it's you all. You guys got to come up with some ideas and send it to the zoning committee. We have a zoning committee. Right, in right. Our well, zone. we have to. There's, we've got to get a, a plan to get. Well, it. and the thing about it is, is the we've talked and talked and talked, but truthfully, the state doesn't even have a, a game plan for this. So we're kind of brainstorming, getting information from our solicitors. So we, we want to come up with something concrete that's long lasting yeah. that actually, we don't want to throw something out there and just say, here's here's something that doesn't that have any teeth behind us. Exactly. In it. So we want to make sure we're very thorough when we, whatever we put together and it's, we want to make sure it's also enforceable too. Okay. So we, I promise you we're working on it. I, I was talking to Craig earlier before the meeting, it's probably still our number one, um, number one concern with you know, fielding calls from, from residents is, yeah. is the rehab. So we, we are definitely aware of it. I and think uh, a lot of people in Ironton are concerned about this because yeah. we're getting such an influx of people from other counties and even from Kentucky and everything. Uh, right. And, uh, okay. But, yeah, Mr. Ross has done a fantastic job. So just, okay. yeah, I, I, if that's going to be an issue up at the Tribune or old building. I, well, I, I just, I, I didn't know if you understood that. That's what yeah. I, I, I I think that's what that's going to be. Okay. Well, I I, I truly believe he will, he will take care of it if, yeah. if it is. Going I to mean, I'm sure he can hold hold it. You know, there's a moratorium on it for right. a year, oh, yeah. but after that, it's uh, can't bar the door again. We'll have something done before the moratorium is expires. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items, Chris? Yes. Can a moratorium be extended to the process? I know we can't do it in the night. I think it would be a hard one to do the night. If you have a plan in a place that is going through or if you're changing the zone and some of you are in the process, you can extend it to the point where you can get that to the same level. Any other audience participation? Good, huh? Yeah. All right, moving on to reports or communications. I'm sorry, communications. There are none. Reports, I'm not seeing any. Moving on to ordinances. Marta, would you please, please give ordinance 2235 first reading? We have a motion by Bob and a second by Craig to suspend the rules for Ordinance 2235. Roll call, please, Marta. Cleary. Cleary. Aye. Amy. Aye. Has been have been suspended for ordinance 2235. Marta, would you please give ordinance 2235 second and third reading by title only? Creating a riverfront development fund from 34 declaring an emergency set your free Creating a riverfront development fund from 34 declaring an emergency third reading. Bob? Move to adopt ordinance 2235. Chris? We have a motion by Bob and a second by Chris. Roll call, please, Marta. Aye. Harvey. Aye. 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 Ordinance 2235 has been adopted. Moving on to Ordinance 2236, would you please give that first reading? Authorizing the creation of the city of Arlington designated outdoor refreshment area at Dora and declaring emergency first reading. Bob? Second motion, we suspend the rules to give Ordinance 2236. 
Craig. Second. I have a motion by Bob, second by Craig to suspend the rules. Roll call, please, Mark. Cleary. Aye. Amy. Aye. Harvey. Aye. Hawk. Aye. Klein. Aye. Perry. Aye. Pierce. Aye. Rules have been suspended. Marta, would you please give ordinance 2236, second and third reading by title only. Mm -hmm. Authorizing the creation of the city of Maryland designated out for refreshment area and door and Discussion, Craig? Yes. Uh, in section 30, it mentions hours of operation, but it doesn't. I thought that we were planning this for certain times of the year. It doesn't mention that in, in this ordinance. Is that, is that still the case? I know we were going to do certain hours and days of operation. Nate, do, no, Nate, did you, do you want? That's the only problem I can see. Well, we need a special events clause on it too. Do we need that in this in this ordinance or? So yes, if you want to change the time, I mean, this ordinance allows the operation of the door to exist Sunday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. Any day of the week, at any time, is the way it's written. Okay. So if you want to limit that, then you'll need to amend this ordinance. So we need a, we need a, we definitely need a, and a special events clause in there, and we need to set dates because I'm pretty sure we said it was only Thursday through Sunday, and Sunday was pretty early. It was ending at like six o'clock, like twelve to six or something like that. Nate, uh, Mayor, can you are you on still? I don't know. I'd, I'd have to run that by. He said he wants to speak. Mayor, are you on there? Does the TV have to be on? To
right. I just don't know what mechanism by which I guess you could.
we're good. I think we're good on this. We're good. We're good. I'm good. We're good.
that was based on Mike's recommendation. Mike recommends it, and it, I just I think everybody's on the same boat. As he's been around a long time, and he knows these parts better than anybody. Um, I think possibly a repair of this this part may last longer than that than a new part that costs three times as much. I don't, I don't know for sure, but Craig, I'm willing to sponsor that legislation um, with emergency language because as it meant. They have, may have to move on that in August, so if you can get that on the next agenda, that'd be terrific. Thank you. Again, what we're doing? Um, preparing a flood conference. Uh, so, Kathy, yeah, I can give you. Me the cost? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Anybody else want on there?